out. Yes, we are now. Awesome. Well, welcome, everyone. Um, you should all have the board packets in the folder. Um, you have three agenda items for the open session, which is our regular operational updates and uh, some Q&A there, as well as an update on the mission statement coming out of the retreat in Chicago a couple of weeks ago. And then uh, Jeff is going to give us an update on the CTO hire. After that, we're switching to executive session, where we have a number of topics as well. We're going to talk about new revenue streams. Um, Megan is going to head that up. We're going to do an update on the financials from the you know finance committee headed by Tiffany. We have to talk about the D to the working groups uh, and uh, you know look for two new members. And she will take the lead in that discussion. And then. Um, we need to talk a little bit about the uh, performance review of our executive director. Uh, with that, I think we can get started with the uh, operational update. Sounds good. Thanks, Dries. Um So uh, thanks, everyone, for making time, especially with folks on the call who are not on the board. I do believe that someone is buttering some toast. <laughs> and might want to mute themselves. That's my interpretation of what's happening. <laughs> but uh, could be so. an English muffin. Could, that's right. <laughs> Maybe a bagel. I don't know. So, <laughs> uh, so some some updates. Um, so first, just an update about the updates uh, in your board packet. So a couple of things um, that as we continue to evolve the packet for 2014, um, things we've discussed uh, with the board, but I want to point out are in here now. Um, so um, as we discussed, one of the elements that I want to make sure that we are um, putting in front of the board um, every month are the things that we are worried about, not just the stuff that we were, you know, managed to accomplish uh, each month. And so uh, you'll notice throughout the staff update this this time, we've got a section um, in each area for risks and what we're doing to mitigate those risks. Um, just to put some things in front of you that, um, you know, are concerns. Um, and they're not necessarily, they're not, um, you know, they're not all risks in the sense of like, uh, this thing could happen tomorrow and the world would end. Um, but these are, you know, just situations we're trying to keep an eye on. Um, and I wanted to get those out there for the board so that you you don't get surprised by anything that might uh, pop up, uh, you know, and become an issue that we, is a hair on fire issue that we actually have to talk about. And also because, you know, our assessment of that risk might be too positive. Um, and maybe you see something there that, you know, you really wanna make sure that um, we're alerted to. So we added that section to the packet and, and that'll be a regular feature uh, from now on. And then the other bit is just the evolution of the metrics. Uh, so we got our dashboard in place and got the January numbers in there. Um, we still have some stuff to work out to make it as, um, uh, as compelling a resources it can be in terms of pointing at where we're really at. So I'll walk through some places where we're still working it out. Um, but uh, as discussed, we now can present to you what the actual goal is for the whole year, what the year to date goal is, uh, where we're at right now, and you know whether we think we're on track or not. So um, we can talk about that as we get into some of these specifics. But just, those are a couple of evolutions to the packet this time through. So Overall, I just say, you know, we've been really busy. It's good that we're busy, right? Um, and things are things are moving right along. Um, the the DrupalCon planning uh, continues apace. Um, the Austin site is out there. Registration and hotel pickups are looking good. Sponsorship sales are really strong. Um, advertising contracts, um, that sales, those sales have been. Um, really strong as well. In fact, we've met a lot of our annual goals already. So we've got lots of good stuff um, going on over here. Um, and we are definitely also beginning to pick up steam and make uh, strides on the Drupal.org side as well. Um, so uh, got a couple of got a couple of ideas launched um, through the working groups and actually, you know, funded the project and are starting to work on things. So all of those cogs are beginning to turn and it, it feels like we're picking up momentum in the right places. Um, so 
I'm, I'm really excited about that, the energy and the enthusiasm over here and how quickly people are working to make good stuff happen. Um, the, the, big, the bigger sort of organizational risks that um, I've been keyed into right now are just being able to hire fast enough and, and hire well when we do it. So, um, you know, most of our hires are on the technical side. Those hires are a little bit more difficult uh, to make. Um, those folks are really in demand. So we have been, um, you know, really trying to get our ducks in the row to bring people onto that team. Um, luckily, a lot of our hires are on the infrastructure side to help support a lot of the um, uh, to help support a, a lot of the tools that um, the community needs, including things like you know test bots, <laughs> stuff like that, uh, dev environments, fun things like that. Um, and those candidates are a little bit easier to source because we actually have a total uh, a, a labor pool of folks who've already worked on our stuff at the OSL. So we feel good about that, um, but I want to make sure that we keep on top of hiring. Um, governance is also an issue that we've discussed at the board level. Um, it seems like uh, after a few months of, you know, watching and waiting and seeing where things might land, that people are still, the groups continue to sort of, if you want to use the forming, storming, norming metaphor, right, <laughs> are still uh, forming, sometimes storming. So we definitely need to pay attention to governance and figure out how to um, make sure that those charters are really clear for people in a practical way, uh, because I think the words make sense on paper, and then what you actually do with them is another thing. Um, Angie and I had a great sort of exercise in Chicago um, where that became really clear. So we have some work to do in governance. Um, and then you'll notice in the dashboard when we get down through some of this stuff that the Drupal.org performance has had a tough time um, in the last, particularly in December, but then moving into January as well. And some of those things were sort of an anomalous mistakes or anomalous things that have happened. And, you know, we're still working our way into more normal numbers, um, having addressed the issue. Um, but, um, yeah, we definitely have some things to do on, on performance, um, you know, hence the hiring really well and <laughs> making that be important. So those are my my key things that I keep working out um, to get you into the dashboard a little bit, um, just to let you know the way we've organized this. If we're at 90% of the goal or above, the cell is green. If we're 75 to 89% of goal, it is yellow. If it is under 75% of goal, it is red. So those are the things that are of um, big concern for us. Um, and we have a lot of green to look at, which is really, really great. Um, particularly um, revenue is looking um, really good so far. Like I said, um, sponsorship for the cons has been really strong. A lot of the advertising revenue has come in really, really strong. Um, so those numbers look really good. Um, they're coupled a little bit with some savings on the staffing side. Um, and that savings is, uh, again, we've got a couple of hires that are going to come on a little later than we had hoped they would. Um, but the big chunk of that is actually that our health insurance premiums did not increase when we thought they would. So um, we came out, yes, there's probably an extra zero in there, Angie. That's what happens when you type by hand into things. Darn it. It'd be nice to have a billion dollars though, wouldn't it? I'll figure that out, Angie. Let me look at that in a minute. <laughs> um, no, wait. What's it? Yeah. That's a million. A million. That's. I'll let me go. Let me go double check real quick uh, in the spreadsheet when we, when I get done talking. So let me let me clear that number up for you. Um. Uh, and these are copy and pasted from a Google Doc. Um. So we'll see. Something went something went awry. Um. Anyway, so that's the big picture on revenue. Um. And it is good that we came out ahead of our projected loss for the month by quite a bit, but. Um, as we've talked about before, um, I don't want to see big swings. I want to see us be in the pocket and manage into that budget really well. So um, other numbers uh, to look at in, in Heart of a Strong Community, um, the program participants, uh, we only have the DrupalCon Austin numbers in there so far, and this was as of January 31st. Uh, so obviously those numbers have shifted in the last two weeks. 
Um, but um, the it looks red, but that's because we divided the 8,000 by 12, right? Um, so this is one of those numbers where we're going to have to figure out what is the what are the rolling hills of that number actually look like? But we feel like there's no need to worry there yet, actually. Sorry, Holly, this is Angie. I just had a quick question. Um, you know, in a, on January 15th, coinciding with uh, with Drupal's birthday, the Drupal Association did a push around like a big sprint type of thing. Mm -hmm. Do we know participant numbers from that? And could we factor that into this number to make it easier? Uh, we probably wouldn't count that here. Um, you know, we would be putting that more in the, um, like, that would show up under the commits. So this okay. program participants we define as DrupalCons, um, Global Training Days, webinars, those sorts of things. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, so that's why that one's in the red. Um, the other red number uh, in, in community is average membership spend. So you may recall that last year we implemented a slider, the idea that people could give as little as... 10 or $15 um, as much as they wanted up with this magical slider tool. Um, it set to default at 35, which was um, above what we were charging for membership before. Uh, but new members, not the renewing ones, but the new members definitely drag that slider down. So it is, uh, yeah. So, um, so we're not um, able to, um, you know, we're seeing a negative number there rather than a positive number. Um, and that's something that, uh, we're going to, you know, continue. There's some more comments down in the board doc about that, but that's something that we've been talking about and, and looking at. Um, but again, with membership not being um, the biggest slice of our revenue pie, um, it's not, uh, we're, we're, we're pretty close to on target for the overall membership dollars. So we're not, it's not a priority at the moment, put it that way. Uh, and then under um, Drupal adoption, um, we have a nice big fat green number in the first number, which is um, number of Drupal sites. Uh, but that would be, again, because we just took the goal of 1,435,000 and divided by 12. That's not really how it works because we started with a number. <laughs> we need to grow that number. We're going to work on that. <laughs> um, so, so we have some, some false positives in here. Um, but we did have um, a, a good number of uh, contributors, uh, which we were excited to see, um, and um, amazingly responsive um, maintainers uh, for some reason in the month of January. So those are our top-level statistics. Thoughts about that? Questions about any of those? Um, you know, in terms of the membership, if we can, even even if people are dragging it down to the lowest level, if we mm -hmm. can increase the uh, the overall number of uh, people who count themselves as members, I would personally I would think of that as a win. Yeah, there's a couple ways to look at you know how we want to evaluate membership, and this was one of the metrics we had selected as important this time around, and you know we maybe maybe we reevaluate that, but yeah, the numbers mm -hmm. the number of members is increasing. The um, membership revenue looks decent, uh, so we'll have to figure that out. We also might want to find, figure out whether uh, the vast majority of those new members are really young people who can't really afford at this juncture in their lives to do more than the, uh, than the, uh, than, than the minimum amount. Yes, I also have some speculation that they are very geographically diverse, and if you mm -hmm. are joining from Belize, you don't have the same right. kind of expendable income. Right. So all of that, I think, is is important to, to factor in. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I would I would uh, I would uh, reiterate the number of people that uh, that uh, are counting themselves as members and are willing to put down a little bit of money to be members. I think is um, in for this particular metric to me is probably the most important metric. We yep. want people engaged. Yep. Definitely. Okay, and we'll see some of that in the membership numbers. Um, so, on to DrupalCons. All right, so uh, our DrupalCon dashboard. Um, again, we talked about attendees because that's a metric from up above. Um, we just divided by 12, which doesn't make a lot of sense for the way that DrupalCon attendance actually gets counted. Uh, but we're, 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 doing fine. we're actually doing fine on that according to um, some of the dashboards that we have for tracking, you know, the rate at which registrations come in. So that's good. Um, and the revenue is all on track, so we're feeling good about that. 
Um, and DrupalCon uh, Austin is on target. Um, a good trend, like you said, towards that 4,000 person goal. Um, and scholarship stuff's coming in. We're working on keynotes. Things just look look good for that. And there's no real hiccups in terms of execution there. Um, we we do have a very big stretch goal getting to that 4,000. Uh, we think it's definitely possible, but it is we could fall short of that. It's a, a, a bigger increase, uh, percentage increase of um, attendance than we've had organically in the last few years. So we have a PR and marketing plan in place. Uh, if that falls short, though, um, you know, we could end up with some smaller net revenue. Um, we're definitely not in danger of that con going red. So that is good. Um, and obviously, we'd look to offset costs as much as possible um, if we end up with a with an attendance shortfall. But um, we don't feel like we have to look at that quite yet. It's just something to put out there. Also, mechanical bull. We're going to have one of those. No, no, uh, no liability issues on that. <laughs> the insurance company is being extremely creative with us. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, on Amsterdam, we're just basically at this point getting ready to, um, launch the site for that. And some of the stuff that goes around launching the site, um, we felt like attendance is really achievable there. Um, our big, uh, worry in Amsterdam is around, uh, the venue itself, which, um, was evaluated based on our older DrupalCon specs when we were planning shows in Europe for 1,500 people. So there's no single space in the venue that will hold anywhere close to the number of people we expect to have at the at the show. I think that's okay because not everyone comes to the keynotes in person. Um, but um, but we're, we're definitely, um, we are definitely being very creative about space in Amsterdam. Hopefully, you know, in future shows, we've got this worked out. But this is the last one of those cons that was um, planned for with those very conservative assumptions about how we may or may not grow. So um, there's that. But other than that, we've been working with a great local team. Um, Steph E has spent a lot of time with Barris, um, and they have so many fun ideas and exciting things planned. And so we're really excited to, to be able to get there. Uh, and the last thing related to DrupalCons, we had been talking about doing a, uh, an, uh, an event for content management system evaluators, CMS evaluators, um, both in the um, uh, CE, CEO and the CIO kind of audience uh, uh, at, attached to a DrupalCon. Um, we had been working with a firm to set that up, and then they became pretty non-responsive, um, and that feels like you know, if you're non-responsive in the um, planning phases, maybe you're not going to execute very well. So uh, we're looking for other firms to work with. Um, and we likely will not, we're 99% sure this is not going to happen in conjunction with Austin. Uh, we're looking to set something up in conjunction with Amsterdam at this point. Um, and, and we'll do that there. Uh, and, and work to find um, some different vendors to, to contract with for that. So it's an update on that event. Um, on the Drupal.org side, this is where we start to see some red. Um, but we knew this, and this is exactly the kind of thing we're trying to fix. Um, as we move into um, that dashboard, um, you know, we had some events in December that in, in January, uh, particularly um, we did some we did some work around, uh, there was some work done around test bots that then like didn't, didn't align. So there's permissioning problems, some other things that really, uh, drug the test bots down. Um, we think that those are, are with Rudy's help diagnosed and fixed at this point. So things seem to be performing since the January numbers much closer to, much closer to, to goal. Um, but, um, you know, it was high in January. We definitely understand that. Um, in addition to Rudy's time to help mitigate the issue that was there, um, we are also um, currently bringing on a part-time uh, DevOps person in a contract role to work with Rudy. Um, the initial focus will be on um, uh, the development environments. And so this is through the software working group budget that is part of our, our process. 
Um, and then uh, we'll have some remaining time with that person to uh, focus on some of the stuff that helps support um, Jeremy's, Jeremy Thorson's test bot plan as well. So we definitely are trying to take some proactive steps to provide support to Jeremy to make this, you know, make this better and less painful for people. Um, so there's that. Um, on some of the other issues, average commits per person, um, you know, comments in the issues, number of commits, um, you know, those are all some interesting numbers to to look at. Um, we know that there are some there's some UX issues that are related to that. There's some community issues that are related to that. There's a lot to untangle. Um, but for us, our focus has been right now, um, again, on two strategies. One is enabling volunteers better um, to help make those um, make those numbers go up. Um, and then the second is, of course, just trying to do what we can to improve the um, developer experience overall. Um, we were able to get some UX changes made, which and she says are feeling better, even if there were still, still some struggles around how that got deployed. Um, and we are, you know, continuing to work on those kinds of issues. Um, one of the additional things we're doing since we had planned to bring on a developer in January or February um, to work with the tech team, um, we found a great developer, cannot bring that person on until May. So right now we're working on bringing on um, a contractor and using that, you know, salary budget to, um, with a contractor uh, for some time to help continue to resolve those those issues, but do them a little more quickly. Any questions about this stuff? Okay. All right. Nice. Putting this in the now we know category, things we can work on. Uh, I was just I was just sitting here thinking I like uh, all the metrics that we track. Yeah, uh, feels it's like they're, they're the right metrics to me. Good. Well, I'm excited about the Drupal 8 landing page. <laughs> that gets a lot of traffic. Yeah. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm curious to see how that commenting and commits number if it's affected by that UX change going out. Yep. Yeah. Does that just happen like basically at the beginning of this month? Then you know, right. we probably won't see that until the end of this month at the earliest. If, I, if it has any impact, I hope it does. Though. Yeah, and it'll always be a little bit awkward some of these things because obviously things like commits, like you can't say it was all UX changes, right? Like any number of no, things. Of yeah. So to your point too, right? Like we did the uh, we did the push in January around January fifteen, right, for Drupal's birthday. Um, yeah. It's hard to say if that number would have been even lower without that. But but I, I like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, when we're looking at these metrics, one thing that might help is um, because there's also seasonal problems and there's like all kinds of other things. Yep. One thing that might help is a competitor to make more work for people. Maybe this is a good idea, but maybe tracking what it was the year prior. Um, during yep. the same time, I don't know if anyone else has thoughts on that, but like 10,000 looks scary, but maybe last year this time we only did 5,000. So on that respect, it's like, oh, wow, that's really good. Or, you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> or maybe we did 50,000 last year and then it's like, oh, you really have to worry about that. Yes. Um, I don't know, though. That might be too much work. I don't think it's too much work um, overall. Um, I'm not sure I would. You know, I think the point in, in this in this board update, right, is to try to keep things as concise as possible. Um, but we should definitely be using that data and to inform like the notes around it, right? So like, oh, 10,000 looks low, but last year it was 10,000 too, right? And the big peak comes yeah, in yeah. October, whatever. Um, but the it, eventually at, at some point, um, you'll you'll also get access to the dashboard doc itself, which I have up on the screen right now. So this is where we are actually tracking it. Um, the main page sort of will tally everything up, but we'll be tracking all of these things monthly and then we'll have them all over time. So it's something that we could go in and examine. Um, and we'll put, eventually we'll put in some trend lines and whatnot so that there's a, some additional graphical analysis available. Okay, awesome. We're just still trying to make it work the right way <laughs> uh, in terms of, um, 
figuring out, particularly the tricky part is figuring out what should the year-to-date goal be, right? So anything else on that? Okay. Um, so then on the software side, um, I think, as we mentioned, getting the UX um, improvements deployed was, was really huge. So I just want to um, take a moment to say thank you so much to um, Boyan and Melissa Anderson and Angie um, and all the people that really put in a lot of volunteer time to get that initial, um, you know, investment made. Um, and then, you know, Drum took a good chunk of last week to make sure we reviewed those things and did some cleanup and, and were able to get the major bits deployed. And there's still some cleanup, but it seems like it's a big improvement. So that's great. Um, and then um, we were also able to get um, one good step of the, you know, empowering volunteer son, which is getting a both a public and a private version of Blue Cheese um, available in the public repository. So you're able to get a version of Blue Cheese that lets you, you know, see what's going, uh, you know, develop in uh, in a way that lets you understand how the theme will work without um, reproducing any of our branded elements. Uh, so that is really great. Um, and we upgraded infrastructure.drupal.org. Um, and this is a really key element, uh, both in terms of uh, communicating with the community um, and in um, us, uh, you know, our tech team getting, being able to work more efficiently together. So what's going to happen on, uh, you know, infrastructure.drupal.org is this, um, this, this tool that will let people see, you know, where things are at. So, um, you know, we've got issues and people sort of hash things out on the issues and then the patch is uploaded. And then once your patch is in there, uh, it just sits there quietly until someone can look at it. <laughs> and you have no idea when someone might look at it or when it might be deployed, right? Mm -hmm. So we're working on that transparency tool at the infra site that will let people know, like, this patch is scheduled to be reviewed here. This patch is scheduled to be deployed here. Um, and we can um, provide some of that um, transparency that doesn't exist today. Um, and obviously, that's also a great tool for us to use as a team. So that'd be great. Um, and in future iterations, that tool will do a lot more, but that's that's the first step. So that was a big heavy lift for, for Tatiana, and we're moving that forward. So that seems good. And one last big thing to celebrate on the software side is the developer tools um, leadership team, which is the first subgroup from the um, software working group. Um, so those guys just got spun up um, and are starting to tackle the questions around how we make develop developer tools better. So, you know, I think um, the big thing, uh, or the big, the big issue that we're still working on um, on the software side is still cleaning up and chasing D7 issues. Um, and it feels like everything in there feels very waterfall because there's one person doing it, right? So something gets attention for a while and then the next thing can have attention. Um, and like I said, we're working on a, getting a contractor in place until our developer can start so we can speed some of that up. Um, and that's our, that's our tactic there to try to move that along a little faster. Uh, and then with Rudy on board on the infrastructure side, just a ton of stuff is moving a little faster. Um, he definitely knows how to bribe the OSU OSL folks. <laughs> and he does it well. Uh, so we are, we're getting lots of stuff done there, um, all with initials and acronyms. <laughs> the key thing is that, um, the key thing is that uh, we're getting set up again to support those um, localized development environments. Um, the first step is just getting development environments set up the right way. Um, and we're making lots of um, progress there moving to um, an open stack cluster um, the uh, and then the second thing that um, Rudy's really focused on is again helping to support um, whatever uh, infrastructure Jeremy Thorson needs for his testing um, test bots yep any questions around that okay on the community side, I would just definitely like to highlight that Global Training Days um, is, this will probably be our biggest one that we've been able to do, um, which I'm really excited about. It's scheduled for February 28th. Um, so we've been doing a lot of specific outreach. I think the numbers are way up from 13 at this point. So we'll have lots of good sites um, and some good stories to talk about there. 
uh, which is wonderful. Uh, we've got webinars going up as well um, on the community side. On, uh, on new revenue, we're making progress on the job board. The RFP closed on February 7th, so we're in the process of evaluating proposals now from vendors. Um, and we're just trying to get that launched in the right time frame um, to meet our budget. Um, and as Megan points out here, you know, that's definitely a risk. If we launch really late, we're going to have a tough time uh, getting into people's budgets um, and we won't meet our numbers. Um, and then, of course, we need to we need to get um, attraction from job seekers. And so really helping the communities, you know, use this tool, find the tool and use the tool is going to be um, a really important part of, of getting it up there. So, um, you know, Joe's working with Megan to put together a, a good marketing and communications plan that that keeps that job board out there in front of people. We talked about advertising, just definitely doing really well <laughs> um, so far uh, with the spots that we have for hosting the Drupal 8 and the Site Builder landing pages. Um, we do have a few more um, landing pages scheduled to come on board, um, come online this year. Uh, and so we've been working to working with the um, content working group to really um, hash out our process there and make sure that they are. Uh, it's clear like where they where their direction ends and our work begins um, and that we're staffing up in the right way to both get the landing pages created, but then also manage them in an ongoing way um, so that they have um, good content, strong SEO, uh, you know, and just lots of interaction uh, with folks. So um, we have that in the staffing plan, um, but those are things that we are, you know, definitely considering all the time. Uh, uh, skip down to marketing and membership there just to um, go to Matthew's, um, a couple of Matthew's points there. Um, number of members, um, we still we don't know what to calculate against for year to date yet, <laughs> but um, uh, dividing 5,000 by 12 would put us at a 600 person goal and that seems silly. So <laughs> we're, uh, we're working on that. But the numbers seem good. Um, the, um, the revenue is... Um, we think is on track for where we want to be. Um, and we're working on figuring out what's the best way to reliably calculate the renewal rate. So we'll get real numbers to you, you know, in the next month or two there. Um, it seems like it would be one number, but there's like five ways to calculate this. So, um, but we feel good about that. Um, and, you know, the risk there, as we mentioned, is around that slider. So um, we're going to be, um, figuring out how to revise the wording or, or figuring out some ways to incent people to keep that slider up. Um, on the D8 marketing side, some of these numbers are a little bit goofy um, because of course, number of downloads of Drupal 8, that's not gonna be very high yet. <laughs> um, so we're gonna, you know, same with number of uses. So these numbers look red, but we think they're actually fine for now. Uh, it's just the way that the calculator is, you know, pulling it out by 12. So we'll have to work on some of those things. Um, and um, I think Joe's overall strategy with this is, you know, not being focused on, you know, how exciting Drupal 8 is going to be when it comes out right now, but rather working within the community to try to get people to work on um, work on Drupal 8 itself. So um, we did the birthday sprint um, on the 15th of February, um, you know, helping to promote the global sprint weekend. You know, there's lots of lots of uh, initiatives for us just to help promote. Um, and so when things come up, definitely let us know. We want to make sure um, we can we can engage people in that. Um, and then, you know, other numbers under uh, marketing communications. Just keep growing our audience, which is great. Um, and uh, things look to be on track for, you know, everywhere we want to be. Um, and we're going to start using advertising soon in our, in some of our marketing efforts. So we're just going to be toying with Google ads, Twitter advertising, uh, particularly around the cons. So that'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see, you know, how we can use those tools, uh, to reach out to, um, not just, you know, our own echo chamber, um, but to see if we can expand, um, our audiences a little bit. Um, as we talked about, that's an important part of growing the cons is, um, growing the kind of people that come to the cons. And we think this is a way that we can get to some of those folks. 
So that's it. Um, general operations and admin, we're looking pretty good. Um, AR collections look way over where they should be. Um, that's just part of the end of the year fun times because lots of people get invoiced at the end of the year and it takes a little while to get paid, but I'm not concerned about that number overall. Um, and then um, we continue to move over to our new bank. Um, we have fun API problems with them. Oops, our sentence got cut off. I don't know where that went. Um, so they, um, we have fun API problems with them and our um, accounting software, Zero. They're working on some solutions for us. Um, and until that gets resolved, we continue to use Bank of America primarily uh, so that we can you know, continue to get their, that, that banking feed easily. Um, uh, the European office, um, we did get word a um, couple of weeks ago that all our paperwork was finally accepted. We just sent over the final agreement. So we should have our actual branch up and running uh, within the next week or two. Um, and that's going to allow us to do lots of fun stuff, including opening our own merchant account, uh, which we'll need for DrupalCon Amsterdam. Um, we can hire staff in the UK, all kinds of fun things. So um, this should be, uh, should, be, uh, should be done and official in the next uh, couple of weeks. And then we can work on um, communicating out some of the benefits for the community. Um, and the last bit is that um, we only have about two more weeks left in the Portland State Business Accelerator office location uh, where we launched in Portland. Uh, and we're really excited to move to a place that is not the Bermuda Triangle of Portland. The so Bermuda just, Triangle of what? Of Portland. Of Portland, gotcha. Yes, all things come here to disappear into this oh little vortex. It's like a vortex of terrible. Um, we're gonna like we're gonna walk to a place and get a sandwich, and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> so, so that'll be uh, the last week of February. Uh, but nothing should change because, except our address, uh, nothing will change uh, because we don't have any telephones or any kind of infrastructure that will be affected. So it should be easy. So is that a good bedtime story? Are you guys still there? We are still here. <laughs> OK. Like, this, is, this is pretty, uh, I'm going to actually use the word amazeballs. <laughs> 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 I needed a second. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's an awesome update, Holly. Like, with the written text and then all the metrics, it's, there's very little to add. Good. I'll, you know, keep sending me ideas for the format. I, I definitely want to keep hearing them, but I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at with this. No, this is very helpful. I think it gives us a, a, a very clear idea of, of, uh, of where we're headed and where we need to work. I appreciate it. Can I, can I just ask too, like, was it, was it helpful in part that sort of Dries took the agenda part of this and, and introed it and sort of handled more of that, like we said, and does that help you, Holly, focus on your sort of update being your primary content? Oh, yeah, I definitely like that part, <laughs> for sure. Okay. Oops. All right. So I just want to double check real quick. I don't see any questions in IRC, so I think we're okay to move on. I missed anything in here. Um, I don't know, uh, Karen, you're muted, but you have your question thing up. I don't know if you have a question. I'll take that as a no. Oh, I, I was just commenting that I um, I was chewing away thinking that I was muted um, earlier when you were suggesting somebody was buttering my toast. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Um, <laughs> I did, I did want to say I, I had lunch with um, uh, somebody who's pretty active and well-connected at um, Automatic, and um, they had made a comment that um, WordPress, you know, a huge part of their revenue, I think they did around 40 to 50 million in revenue last year. And um, 
you know, they, they've had success with support and that's grown a nice business and, and they've had some, some pretty good success with their VIP hosting, mm -hmm. but where the really rapid growth has come from revenue and they may, may soon become the number one source of revenue was that every page on WordPress that you click into, um, unless you type the URL directly, you're presented with embedded video ads um, and through this ad choice network stuff. So they just basically have video ads everywhere. And so they're just getting millions, if not on the way to tens of millions of dollars in um, advertising yeah. dollar revenue coming in from video ads. Yeah, we definitely see a ton more. I mean, obviously, we, we set some goals that felt aggressive and then met them in the first month, right? So clearly, we underestimated that. <laughs> um, although we have a lot more work to do to really show to, to live up to that potential. But um, I, I think there's a lot, there is a lot there for sure. Um, and I, I definitely don't want to, you know, leave money on the table that we can use for the project. Um, but obviously, you know, we'll want to do that in a way that makes sense to the community. Um, and yeah, I've been, I've been looking at their stuff. I mean, they, they built their own, Karen, they built their own ad service, right? Because they also sell that, they also, you can use that ad service if you have a WordPress site. Is that correct? I'm I'm not as familiar with those details, but okay. but uh, yeah, that's just an interesting bet. Okay, and just for the record, Denise is here too. Hi, Denise. Hi, guys. Sorry, I'm so late. I had another unavoidable, but here we are. Are you feeling better? Yes, I'm so much better. Thank you for asking. Um, yes, I, I'm, I'm likely to fall into fits of coughing now. <laughs> Good. All right. Do, you wanna, do we want to move forward then? I think we're done with the operational update. Trace, you muted yourself in case you're wondering. There you go. Sorry about that. All right, so the next topic is um, to talk a little bit about the vision. Um, I'm going to ask Matthew to do so. I can give a little bit of context if that's helpful while um, you know, Matthew gets uh, ready. So this is coming out of the retreat in Chicago a couple of weeks ago where we spent, as a board, we spent uh, a couple of days together um, to talk about the vision, um, the governance, and the values of the Drupal Association. So we kind of... Um, you know, introspected ourselves about what we what we think we're doing well, what we think we can do better, what we're proud of, where we want to get to, uh, and all of these things. And based on that, and you know, Matthew will give you the details here. Based on that, we decided to evolve or revise our mission statement, um, and we would like to bring it to the board uh, today uh, for approval. So, uh, Matthew, feel free to give us a little bit more color. Sure. Thanks, Trace. Um, so I was uh, I was asked if I would uh, um, distill our essentially our, our our day and a half of effort into um, half a page, and uh, uh, that could be used, I think, I think internally, and then uh, perhaps uh, um, uh, focused externally, so people have a good sense of why it is that we're doing what we're what we're doing. Um, and uh, so I I, uh, I wrote uh, a half page, which you all have. Uh, I think you're you're all invited to. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just go over it really quickly. Um, broke it up into the three areas that we talked about: the vision, um, the values, and then the mission. Um, and we decided that uh, on a vision standpoint, over the next three years, that we want to have an engaged and satisfied. Uh, and in brackets, development community. I think that we all just, uh, agreed that uh, development was really important in this, although there was some was some discussion as to whether whether um, that uh, ought to be um, the the 100% focus or not. Um, so I've left it in 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 parens, and I think we could uh, we could discuss that more. But uh, in terms of deciding whether we're going to adopt the uh, the new mission, I don't think that that uh, that uh, really affects that decision. 
Then the second thing that we uh, talked about for our vision was that we want to have an accelerated adoption uh, rate, again in parenthesis of Drupal, the idea that we want to see Drupal grow um, at a faster rate than it has been. We decided uh, in order for the board to support this activity that we need to anticipate the work needs of others and that's our community and we talked about the fact that that would be that could manifest itself as the tools that we provide for the, uh, the development portion of our community and the fact that we are part of the community and we need to embrace that. Uh, we discussed values and we decided that we wanted to take action, fail frequently, be adaptable and pre be proactive rather than reactive. And all of these things led us to look at the, uh, look at the mission statement and if I recall correctly, Tiffany just blurted out most of it almost, <laughs> almost perfectly, which was just brilliant. Um, but using values, board role and vision as our filter, we decided that, uh, that the, we wanted a mission statement of Drupal powers the best of the web. The Drupal Associate unites a global open source community to build and promote Drupal. And at the end, we sort of uh, came to the conclusion that, uh, that this statement is more aligned with the direction that, uh, that the organization as a whole ought to be headed. Um, so that's, that's my little tiny little report um, on our uh, on our retreat. Awesome. Is there any any questions? I mean, we as a board we have discussed this, but I don't know if there's any new thoughts or questions on this. If not, um, I would move that we um, accept this new uh, mission statement and that we uh, start to roll it out. Um, Anyone that wants to uh, second that motion? I'll second it. Samir. I can second it. Uh, I'll second it. <laughs> All the seconds. <laughs> I did make some capitalization changes just in the doc. All right. Awesome. Um, so then the, the last topic for the open session is to get an update from from Jeff Walpole on the, uh, the CTO uh, search or the hiring. Sorry, say that again? Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, I was unmuting. I didn't know if it worked. <clears throat> yeah, so um, just to tag, I, I gave an update last month, I think. Uh, generally speaking, things are, I'm not going to go over all this sort of background again, but um, I think generally speaking, things are looking up. Um, after the, uh, after the, the new year, we've had a lot more both quality and quantity, uh, I think, in the candidates coming through. Uh, we've also had really good uh, involvement from the board and the advisory board members, um, Michael Myers, uh, George, Mosh, David Strauss, Denise, Holly. Everybody's been really helpful, and I think that's all really positive. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm speaking from notes that I, I dropped directly into the board packet in case anyone's wondering what I'm speaking from. Um, we, uh, we've had about 60 applicants to date, give or take, um, and we're keeping close track of them. Uh, that's not still not the volume that we wanted, but again, it's picked up since the new year. Um, I think about 15 people have had first round interviews. I may have miscounted a little bit, but it's roughly in that neighborhood to get the scale of it. Um, and we currently have four people doing second round with interviews, which are technical interviews. Um, so we're actually getting Dries involved now um, for the first time, and that's been good. Um, we're holding off on an executive recruiter. Um, the cons are, uh, you know, we still haven't had huge community help or, or in involvement in sort of making referrals. I mean, it's been it's been a few troopers and, and not a widespread, uh, you know, referral network. Uh, and generally speaking, I think the qualifications of most of the candidates, you know, just sort of generalizing across the spectrum, um, a little bit below maybe where we wanted for the CTO role. Um, and Dries has been uh, vocal to Holly and I about that as well recently, just feeling like 
in general, um, you know, our expectations are not quite as or have not really been met on that front. Um, and like I said, uh, he's getting involved now in a few uh, interviews, and uh, I feel pretty good about the about the you know what we're pushing through now um, relative to before. Uh, but I would like to see it pick up with a few more few more folks, um, and uh, we'll see where the next week goes. Uh, as, as always, I can't for confidentiality reasons since it's a public board meeting. I can't speak to individuals who are in the process. Um, and and those, even those that have access should, should remain highly confidential about that. Um, I don't think most of these people are particularly sensitive, but I, I think it's our obligation to, to keep it confidential. Um, those that, that need access can, can get that through our recruiter box account. So that's it. Um, any questions? Do we have a sense of, uh, of timing for an offer? No, not at this time. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, Therese, you want to take it back? Yeah, sure. Uh, is there anything else that anyone wants to bring up? If not, we are going to move to the um, executive session. I don't know if there's any questions in, on IRC. Nothing in IRC. And I don't see anything else in the webinar either. So I think we're good. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for uh, tuning in and participating. Uh, we're going to adjourn and then um, we'll regroup at the board on the other line. Yep. Have Thanks a great so. day. All right.